Hi there, my name is Vic Veer. I'm an ears, nose and throat surgeon that works for the NHS in central London. And today I want to tell you about eustachian tube dysfunction. Eustachian tube is the tube that runs from your ear to your nose. And what it does is that it allows you to pop your ears when you're, you're scuba diving or when you're uh, in an aeroplane and you feel like you, your hearing's blocked. So what you do is you pop your ears, your ears pop, everything works fine. Sometimes if you just go like that or something like that, or you swallow or you yawn, all of these things will pop your ears in a, in a normal fashion. There are some people, however, who have something called eustachian tube dysfunction, which basically means it's slightly blocked. And when it's slightly blocked, you get symptoms such as having a blocked ear, even when you're not on an aeroplane or when you're not scuba, even when you're just on land going to work and doing normal things, you might feel like your ears always blocked and you feel like you feel like you always want to pop your ears and that can be quite irritating. If you do manage to pop your ears, you find that your hearing comes back for a short time and then your hearing starts going down again, but you still have the crackling in your ears. And this only lasts for a few seconds, a few minutes, sometimes a few hours. And it just it becomes very irritating. And because you're constantly focusing on your ears, what it does do is lead to a risk of you getting tinnitus, which I'll talk about in another video. But when your station tube becomes really bad and when the station tube is completely blocked, all the fluid that is generated normally behind the eardrum has nowhere to go. And therefore it starts filling up behind the eardrum and you get what we call glue ear, which often you see in children, but you also see in adults as well when the eustachian tube becomes blocked. The problem with glue is that you get really bad hearing because there's fluid on one side of the eardrum, which is a membrane that floats backwards and forwards. But if there's fluid on one side, that eardrum isn't able to move normally and therefore you can't hear so well and you really struggle and you feel like you're underwater all the time. So if you have these symptoms, go and see your doctor. It is worth saying that if you've got a blocked ear, particularly if you've got a blocked nose or even bleeding from your nose from time to time, sometimes a bad smell from your nose, you ought to see your doctor immediately because there may be a problem at the back of your nose which is blocking your ear, giving you eustachian tube dysfunction. Often we say in adults, a unilateral or one-sided eustachian tube dysfunction, particularly with a problem in the nose, you ought to see your doctor. There is a questionnaire that you can look at, which I'll put a link up or an image up here for you. And what that is, is called the Eustachian Tube Dysfunction Q7 or question seven. There are seven questions. And if you score yourself, you'll see that if you get a score of over 21, it's at that level where we think, well, actually it's worth you seeing a doctor, worth getting treatment for this problem, particularly if it's been going on for more than two, three months. But the purpose of this video, however, is to give you a few things you can do at home before you see your doctor to try and remedy the situation yourself. All the sprays and products and devices that I talk about in this video that I review will be available uh, with affiliate links in the description below. So have a look at those if you're interested. So the first thing you ought to think about is if you have a blocked nose or not. If you've got a very blocked nose on one side because your nose is twisted or, or you're very congested and you've got a blocked nose because of a cold or a flu and it just seemed to carry on afterwards, then it may be worth seeing your doctor to try and unblock your nose. Often they give a steroid nasal spray or something like that to unblock your nose and that can help people with eustachian tube dysfunction. There are, however, studies out there that show that if you don't have a blocked nose and but you have eustachian tube dysfunction, using a spray will not help. And I'll put a link to that up here. And if you want more information about unblocking your nose, I've got a bunch of videos on my channel. You can browse through that at the end. So the second thing you ought to think about is trying to pop your ears regularly or as frequently as you can. So the way you do this is that you pinch your nose hard, not, not like when you're blowing your nose where you let a little bit of air out like this. What I want you to do is pinch very hard so no air can come through, but still try and blow your nose. So that air has got nowhere to go apart from going into your station tubes and blow through there. The idea is to try and use that eustachian tube so that you can clear out some of the debris or whatever is blocking that eustachian tube. You're trying to get it to work again. What you mustn't do is pinch your nose and then swallow because when you do that you're doing the opposite of what I want you to do. I want you to blow air in, not pull air out. Now I appreciate the coordination to do this is a little bit hard and some people just don't get it, particularly if you're trying to help uh, your, uh, your child, your son or your daughter to do this because you're worried they're getting glue ear, they're worried that they're losing their hearing and you want to try and help them to avoid them from getting an operation. So sometimes this doesn't really work, which brings us on to some of the devices which you can get for over the counter or at Amazon. So number three is the Oto Vent Balloon, which is a very simple device. It's a balloon and a little, um, like a little tube, plastic tube thing, which you can put in your nose like this. You put the balloon over the end of this like this. I think it's about seven pounds from Amazon. It comes the next day normally. And you get this sort of arrangement. And what you do is you put your finger over one side of your nostrils like this to leave one side open. And you just try and 
blow it up like this. Now, um, my son could do this great uh, when I was giving it to him because I didn't want him to, uh, he had glue ear and I didn't want him to have an operation. I was scared of him having a, a grommet operation. So I've got him to do this since the age of two, I think. Uh, and he used it for a few years. And every time, you know, I left it by his toothbrush, so he remembered to uh, pop his ears each day, um, at least twice a day. And every time he said, uh, what? Or, you know, turn the TV up, I asked him to pop your ears. And the more he did that, his ears slowly unblocked themselves. Some of the glue came out so he could hear a little bit better. And what you're doing is just trying to blow this up as much as you can. I can't do it. He was able to blow it up like this. And if it is, if people are able to blow it up, you should just leave it in your nose and let it just come straight back in and pop your ears. Particularly if you feel that even though you're pushing very hard, it's not popping your ears. Me just doing this is popping my ears, which is great. But some people may need a bit more pressure to do that. So these balloons were part of the national guidelines in England uh, before you used a, a grommet insertion. So we would do a hearing test, prove that you had bilateral, both sides glue ear. Then we'd ask children to use these balloons, pop their ears as often as possible, and then do another hearing test in three months time. If they still had a problem at that point, then we talk about hearing aids or grommets or some of the other things that we can do for um, glue ear. But this was great, um, it worked very well, but sometimes even doing this was a little bit too much coordination for people um, and so there is this thing called an ear popper so this is a device which is uh, basically a, a pump which pumps air out of here and all you do is you put this in your nose like this and you press the button i'll put it close to here so you could go and it just pops your ears um, and it works very well i found this very effective it's got an awful lot of i don't know what the word would be talk or something like this it is able to open up your ears sometimes people just go like this and and it seems to go right down their throat. It may be worth swallowing at the same time, but you do run the, uh, the risk of you pulling air out because you've blocked it like this. So just make sure it's going, at, oh my God, or just talking and it works very well. Um, anything that does to move the palate up and block off the nose, it just pops your ears. It's, it's really good. There is another product on the market called Eustace or Eustache or something. It's the Italian way of saying it. I mean, I'm English, Mike, and I say Eustachium tube. But um, I think the correct way of saying it is Eustachium. Um, and I didn't find, oh, this is a lot cheaper than the, uh, the ear popper device. Uh, this one is a lot cheaper, but I didn't find it very effective. Every time I tried to use it to pop my ears, it didn't really do anything. I put it up on my nose, uh, I pressed the button, and it, if anything, it sucked air out because I was trying desperately to, to do it. But when I swallowed to try and get it to and, and let the air go into my ears, it, it just sucked the air out of my ears. So uh, it may work for you. If it works for you, great. It is a lot more gentle, I think, than the ear popper, which I think is a better device, particularly if you can't pop your ears. So if you're worried about your, your son and daughter, you don't want to put too much pressure, you could try that first. But I think, um, I think the ear popper is better personally. But really, there is no need to buy any of these devices. If you can just go and pop your ears naturally, then just do that. It's much less of a hassle than walking around with one of these things all day. And if you can just pop your ears all the time, that really helps. If you're on an aeroplane flight and you're worried, oh God, it really hurts every time I'm on an aeroplane, then just remember, particularly on takeoff and particularly on landing, just keep popping your ears as often as possible, every minute of the takeoff and landing. So but keep going once you're at that sort of cruising height. Uh, and even when you're cruising, maybe worth doing once or twice every hour, just to make sure you don't get into a problem where your ears really hurt or you get an infection or something bad like that. Uh, as I said, it's more important on the way down, but do remember to pop your ears constantly so you can avoid that pain and infection that can occur. Now, in my experience, people who have an ear infection and then they go on a flight, they seem to have long-term problems with eustachian tube dysfunction. If you're in that situation, I'd definitely leave it three months before thinking about an operation or anything like that. And there are videos on my YouTube channel about that. But I would try and give yourself a little bit of patience, use these devices, keep popping your ears, and you'll find that with time, sometimes things do improve until the point you get to three months, you're like, actually, it's not causing me too much problem now. It feels like it's going away. I don't need to see a doctor anymore. But remember, doing a eustachian tube Q7, so the ETD Q7 questionnaire at the start, and maybe doing it once a week or once every month to show that you're actually getting slowly better with time really helps people, gives you a bit of a, um, makes you feel like you're actually progressing, you're getting somewhere. So keep trying to be analytical about it. Say, how much of a problem is this? Uh, and just keep going. Once you're no longer focused on your ears, once you're no longer worrying about your ears, so it's not irritating so, you, so much, you might find that then your tinnitus starts coming down again so you won't have to worry about that anymore and that will slowly get better with time. 
If after a period of time, even though you've been popping yours, you've tried everything, you've tried all these devices, it doesn't seem to be working, it is worth seeing your GP or your family doctor about it to try and get them to help you with this problem. And there's lots of things we can do. Uh, I've done a couple of videos on my YouTube about this. There's one there about the actual operation to clean out the eustachian tube. And there's another video here which explains it in a bit more detail with some pretty pictures and things like that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.